Oh, wow. Hey. What you still doing, um? No, oh, I just got out the shower. Feeling extra good. I was just, I pulled a late night session. Um, you know, poker session tonight. And it went really well. And uh, so I stayed, you know, kind of late. Cause just running like, you know, so good. <laughs> I was doing so good I couldn't leave, you know. Too profitable. But what about you? What are you doing? It's the middle of the night. I'm just having some trouble sleeping. That's cool. Well, I mean, not so cool if you're actually trying to go to sleep. <laughs> Anything in particular keeping you up? Okay. Yeah, that's all right. Mm -hmm. It's understandable. These things happen sometimes. Some I can do to help. You don't know. Wow. What exactly? best to help you go to sleep because I want you to get good rest obviously you need that <laughs> why am I so cheery <laughs> in the middle of the night I can't help myself for one and for two I mean just had a refreshing shower. I'm seeing you now, so. King just feels really good, you know? Even better looking at you. No one might help you. Foot rub. Having motorcycles drive past while you're trying to sleep. <laughs> that could be helpful. <laughs> Do you want that? Yeah. Of course I can do that for you. Let me get It's very nice. Mm -hmm. How does it feel? Good? Okay. Now what I want to know is what you've been doing all this time that I've been going. And why you ain't come out if you heard me get in the shower? Well, I assume you heard me get in the shower because you were awake. You were just trying to go to sleep. That's understandable. Yeah, I missed you while I was going through. <laughs> Girl. Girl. I'm not even gonna tell you about some of the about some of the beats today that I had over the players. It was just crazy. I mean, running so hot, so hot, you know. Man, that shower was so good too. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes, yes, the first thing that I think about 
just hopping in the shower when I come back from playing poker. Because I just can't help myself. Rubbing out the stress from your feet. You so need it, I can tell. Why don't you just relax and take some deep breaths while I rub your feet? And I'll tell you what. Wait, you want me to tell you a story? What kind of story? Any kind of story? <laughs> yeah, alright, I got you. I can definitely do that. Okay, so... You know, the king is good at this. Don't worry about it, I got you. <laughs> alright, look. Okay. But, you gotta promise to just relax. And let me help you get to sleep. Yeah. Okay. As soon as you do. Oh, well, I mean, I'm, I can go to sleep at any time. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm particularly tired right now, but I do have the inclination to just be close to you right now. So, if I'm able to get you to go to sleep, then perhaps, you know, I'll get sleepy too. And I'll just cuddle up. It'll be a cool night. Comfy, cozy night. Under the Christmas lights. <laughs> yeah, definitely. While we go along walking in the winter wonderland. Okay. So go ahead. Lay back. <sighs> okay, so. There once was an angel. Now this angel was no ordinary angel. She stood out amongst all of the angels in heaven. She's beautiful, absolutely just radiant and warm in her presence and in her energy. And this angel was so free in her spirit that she wanted to come to earth. She'd never been to earth. Bell of the ball in heaven. But she wanted to see different lands, you know. She wanted to experience what it might be like to be amongst men, you know. And so she mustered up the courage Flapped her little angel wings and went to God and asked if she could come to earth. Now, the thing about this angel in particular, and this was something noted by all the other angels and God himself, was that she was a restless spirit. She had so much love and energy in her that it was sometimes just hard to boil that down to get herself into a restful state. So, you know, while that's lovely, it's also like, you know, in heaven, that is, for the angels there, it was also kind of a... Um, made them restless too so god's like if you think that you can go offer something great to man and 
also find a part of yourself that maybe you feel is missing here. Of course, I want you to go. So she goes. And, you know, happy as ever, she flaps her wings off to. This is her flapping her wings. Very happily. She flies off to her house in heaven. Packs her bag. <sighs> when she gets there, she's got the bag. She's ready. She's excited. She goes back to God to give him one more thank you for allowing her to take this journey, take this trip. And the big hug and the biggest, brightest smile have been lit up one more time to send her off with the warmest see you later ever. <laughs> so, this angel takes her bag, gives all of her brothers a hug, brothers and sisters a hug, takes a while because there's lots of angels in heaven and uh, she sets sail flying down the earth she flies all the way down to earth she finds herself after she breaks through the clouds marveling the glory of the plains, of the grass, of the ocean. She sees the multitudes of people populating the ground below. She has really good vision. You see, she has a mind that's unlike anything else on this earth. So she can see things that nobody else can see, you know. So she sees all the people populating on the earth and she decides to land somewhere where she can feel a vibrant light. Now here's the thing I forgot to mention to you. God told her that she can go to earth, but obviously not as an angel because it would be unsettling for people there, you know, for his creation. He didn't want to stir up any kind of chaos so under the ruse of not the ruse but you know under the premise of not wanting to cause any kind of disruption he tells her she can only go to earth if she agrees to take on the form of an owl owls are inconspicuous and you know can still somehow hold the energy of her, you know, of her angelic being, of her majesticness, you know, and thrilled at the opportunity to see Earth, she gladly agrees. So as she breaks into the atmosphere, her big, fluffy, Soft angel wings turn into big, fluffy owl wings. Her beautiful body contorts to be this grand, majestic, big owl bird. She flies down to the earth, lands, and sees the ocean. She lands on a tree that is near the shore. And as she's there, she observes some humans holding hands, walking along the beach. And she thinks, man, it must be nice to experience human affections human love, right? So she's picturing what it would be like to do this kind of thing. And just as she starts to picture it, the couple who are walking stop. 
Can you have a seat right there in the sand? They're looking out at the ocean and they're looking at each other and they're looking at the ocean and they're looking at each other and they're looking at the ocean and they're looking at each other. And then they decide to just lean back and enjoy, you know, the sun and just the energy of the moment. She looks, she can tell they're probably tired. They've been walking for a while. And so they're laying back on the beach. Water in their hair. <laughs> From, you know, swimming in that vast, beautiful ocean. And as they're sitting there on the beach, they look up, see the owl. The owl sees them. There's a moment where they connect. And somehow, some way, it made the humans feel safe. They felt protected. Like there was something greater than them watching over them. And so they decided to rest here where they felt safe. And leaning back on the sand, holding each other's hands, they close their eyes. And minutes later, not long after, they begin to drift off into a peaceful sleep. Now the owl sitting in the tree thinking, wow, this is a beautiful sight. I don't sleep. I wonder what it would be like to be able to just sleep. Because see, she's a night owl. And during these times, this just isn't her time for sleeping. Well, she then observes some other humans walking along the beach. She decides these humans are good here. They're in a very peaceful state. I can feel their energy. Everything's good here. So, I'm going to take my owl wings, soar them on the ocean breeze, and flap along and see what else I see. So, with glee, she jumps up, takes off. Hovers over the other humans who are walking. They look up, instantly feel blessed at our presence. And they stop, look at her. She's gorgeous. They don't know why they're so taken aback by this owl, but something is in this owl's energy that they recognize immediately. And as they look, and the owl looks at them, the owl decides, this might be a good place to land for a while. Everything seems welcoming for me here. So she does just that, lands on the beach, looks around, observing, just observing her surroundings, you know, just taking in the inventory of the earth around her. She observes the sand, the feel of the sand in her feet. She observes the feel of the wind rustling her feathers up in the air. Marvels in it. She observes the sound of the ocean as the waves lap up one after the other. It's a beautiful thing. And just like the last pair of humans, these pair of humans decide to just take a break here. It seemed like a good place. Like, somehow, there was something really good watching over them. So they do just that. They stop. They sit down. And they observe the beach the same kind of way as the owl was. They smile. And she smiles back without 
being able to smile because she's got this little owl beak, you know. She smiles internally and it radiates from her being. So probably an hour goes by like this. And as they're sitting on the beach, they begin to get tired. So they're looking around. There's, you know, there's people here and there, but there's nothing going on. You know, no real reason for alarm or anything. So they decide to lay back as well. And eventually, they drift off to sleep. Now she's only seen, you know, a little bit of portions of the earth so far with, you know, what she saw flying over. What she saw since she's landed. She's only seen a little portion. But already, she's becoming a bit envious of the humans here. Because one after another, they're finding it just so easy to just drift off into these beautiful, peaceful states. Wherein somehow their bodies go into total trust and rest. And... They allow them, these things to happen without much concern of anything else. And it is so freeing. She can tell in their being that their minds are somewhere else in those times and they're not here. And it seems almost like a feeling of home, a feeling of heaven for her, an angelic feeling. So with the familiarity of this, she wonders what it's like here versus in heaven. So she decides, you know, maybe I'll try to take some time to rest this and find a way with the humans and experience the beauty that they're experiencing. So she rests, tucks her little body over her beautiful wings and closes her eyes however she finds it difficult to drift the way the humans do all that was happening was she was becoming more aware of her other senses she could hear things better notice her sense of smell was better she became more acutely aware of each grain of sand between her cute little owl feet. <laughs> she noticed the feel of the wind. She noticed that even as she sat there trying to rest, there was still a million thoughts going through her mind of what Earth could be be like, you know, in other situations or other circumstances or in different places or what she could be doing here. They raced and raced and raced and raced and raced and she couldn't seem to calm them. So she decides, this is beautiful, but I think I'm going to move on and see some other things. So she stands up, opens her wings takes off into the sky. Now at this time, the sun's beginning to go down. The humans were safe. Everything was fine. With her wings on the sky. She's looking down below at everything happening. She still sees much life. There are these strange vehicles that emit lights you know, they're just maneuvering around these pathways, you know. What they were was cars on the streets, but she doesn't know that, you know. She just observes and sees that there's beauty happening, there's lights glowing, there's people moving or things moving about. And so she decides to go and be a part of it in the city. 
So she flaps her wings and lands on a building. Stops. Takes inventory of what she sees around her, above her, below her. Everything above seems peaceful. There's some birds flying. Nothing quite as majestic and beautiful as her. However, the birds maneuver. She looks around. There's n nothing going on on the top of the buildings. Looks down. And there's lots of life. Lots of movement. She wonders what everyone's doing, where everybody's going. See, these people were like her. These people, you know, were in motion, you know. If they're moving, their thoughts must be in motion too, right? So, she decides, I want to get a closer look. She flies down. Lands. She lands on one of those moving vehicles. And it stops. Now, this car was just parallel parking. And... So when it stops, the people inside don't even know that she's on top of the car. But they do when they open their doors, hop out of the car, you know, gleefully ignorant of what's going on. They close the door, look on top of the car, see her get startled. Ah, right? And their energy, the commotion of their energy, startles her. So she, oh, you know, the same kind of way, and opens her wings, you know, like in a in a panic or a startle, rather, um, not exactly knowing what to expect next. They get this swinging at her. Oh, what are you? Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! So she jumps off of the car and hovers overhead of them. They become even more afraid once they see the vastness of her wingspan and can sense the power of her aura and don't exactly know how, what to do with it. People usually don't um, accept or immediately take kindly to things they don't understand. So, you know, they're flailing around oh my god they're even afraid now not knowing that she's an angel and wouldn't hurt them you know they just they just know what they see and so they're freaking out a little bit she's freaking out because they're freaking out and so she decides oh my goodness let me just get away from this and flies away she flies down the street now, as she's flying, she didn't gain altitude, didn't go higher. She just decides, I'm going to get away from them. But the people on the beach didn't freak out when they saw me. So this must not be a common human thing. It's just these people, right? So she's still flying, you know, not far above what a normal person's head would be at. So, now that she's in the city, there's way more people here. And everybody who's on the streets in the city looks up, sees the owl not far, you know, just several feet above their heads. They're freaking out too, you know. They're all, oh! And she has no idea why, you know, this... this kind of thing, you know, would would be happening, you know, why they would be freaking out. She has no idea what's going on. And so somebody who is massively afraid and ignorant and you know, perhaps 
a little stupid even, decides, you know, oh my God, this owl is going to attack somebody. And <laughs> picks up a rock, throws the rock at the owl. Now, the owl's fast, but she didn't see the rock coming. So the rock clips her on her wing. Ow! You know, she, it's her first time experiencing any pain on her. She's, ow! You know, and flutters down to the ground. Now, the people who are around her, they, they they back up away from her. She's, you know, fluttering, trying to get back up to her feet and manages to do so. As she does, she's in, a, in an afraid state now. She's wired, you know, and she's looking around, jacked into the people. And she thinks, why is everyone staring at me? And in that moment, here comes one of the humans approaching her. Calmly, slowly, with their hands outstretched. And intuitively, she somehow connects with this human. This human is kind. This human doesn't have the same energy as the afraid people who don't understand her around her. This human was different. This human was special. So, cautiously, you know, she looks at him, you know, opens, opens her wings a little bit just to see if, uh, you know, however he reacts. He pauses for a minute to make sure that she's comfortable. Then, just as she could sense his energy, he could sense hers and knew that she, she was cautious of him but didn't want to hurt him. And so, he takes a second, then begins to walk towards her again, easing his way, a little more comfortable with each step as she does an attack. She has the thought to fly away because she doesn't know what's happening. I mean, she wasn't expecting for the other human to hit her with a rock. She didn't know what was going to happen, you know, how this was going to go. So she's very cautious on her toes about it, if she had toes. <laughs> on her claws about it <laughs> and then he gets just close enough to reach out his hand to her slowly he reaches out his hand and for some reason she can just you know she goes from to the wings begin to let down easy. Her defenses slowly start to come down. Sensing her sense of ease around him, he continues. He advances a little further, a little further, a little further, until he was just able to touch her. And all he does is touch her with his fingertips. And immediately, she can feel his energy. Sense that he is coming from a place of genuine and peace, you know. So she allows him to touch her, not knowing what's going to happen next. And all he does is trace his fingers along her wings down to where he saw her get hit with a rock and sees that her little wing has been a little damaged. So when you know he touches that spot, it's a little tender. She, you know, 
you know, or, you know, pulls her, pulls her wing back, and he puts his hands up again, so that she knows he means no harm. And at this point, she can just tell, for this, you know, some kind of way, he's not there to hurt her, and he wants to help. So he allow, she allows him, she allows him to help. Um, he reaches out again, this time much more gently, consciously, and looks at her wing, and offering a hand, he allows, you know, he puts the hand at her feet, and she's not sure exactly what to do, but she gets the sense that he's inviting her somewhere or inviting her to climb aboard, basically. And looking around at the crowd who can't believe what they're seeing, you know, they're, they're all afraid and timid of this great big owl, you know, but not this human, not this one. This one's calm, and this one has genuine concern in his eyes, and in the aura of his spirit. So, she trusts him, and one claw at a time, puts her feet on his arm. Slowly, he begins to lift her looks her directly in her eyes, her big, bright, beautiful eyes, and can tell that not only has she been hurt, but that she's a restless owl and could use some kind of easing, comforting attention. So what does he do? He begins to walk with her. She, somehow mesmerized by the eyes of this human and feels safe in his arms. She looks around at the humans who are eagerly parting ways to let this one walk past. And he puts out the other hand, one arm that has her on it. He uses the other hand, begins to pet her. This soothes her, calms her even further. Now her wing is hurt, but there's just something about the presence and aura of this human that makes her feel like it's gonna be okay. And so, she allows herself to be comforted. He pets and pets, walks down the street with her, finds a store where they sell pet goods. Now, at this store, he didn't know if it would be okay to take her in or how she would respond. So, what he does is, just asks her, he just asks her, are you hungry? And she cooks her head at him, not exactly knowing how to respond, because, you know, in heaven the angels don't get hungry, but for some reason, here on earth, she feels a little crumble in her stomach. <laughs> and she doesn't know how to respond to it. So she just crooks her head at him. He smiles. And says, I'm going to take that as a yes. So I'll tell you what, beautiful bird you. I'm going to go into this place where they have food. 
for special birds like you. And I'm going to get some, and I'm going to bring it back to you. Okay? Now, he gestures to set her on a rail. There's a rail that is outside of the store. And he gestures to set her on the rail. However, she feels uneasy at this. She doesn't want to be left alone with the other humans who are capable of throwing rocks at her in the absence of his presence. No one seems to want to bother her while he's with her. So she doesn't hop off. And when he tries to set her down again, she doesn't hop off. Something, something just feels reassuring and safe about being in this one's arms. So, sensing that she might have some anxiety or fear about being left out here, also not knowing that she would try to fly away and hurt herself anyway, he decides, I'm gonna try to take her into the store. And if people freak out, we'll just leave, no big deal. So, he opens the door, walks into the store and pauses to see how the clerk is going to respond to him walking in with the bird. And she goes, wow, what is that? And um, he didn't want to say he didn't know because that might seem like he was just bringing in a wild animal and it might not go over so well. So... What he does to instead is he says, this is family and she's hungry and she's also got a hurt wing. Is there somewhere where I can take her to treat her? She says, well, we sell food here so I can help you with the hungry part. But the healing part, I don't really know so much about where to guide you. So, she says, he says, okay, I will instead take some food from you, and in his own mind decides, I might just have to take her home to help fix her up myself. And he, accordingly, he gets the food, thanks the clerk, walks outside, says to the bird, beautiful bird. Would you like to come to my house? I can help you there. I, I have supplies. And there is also someone that I trust very much who is a magician. And he can, poof, make the wings go back to normal. Now... Unable to communicate with him in his own language, but fully understanding everything he says. She says, <laughs> Is that the sound owls make or is that the sound pigeons make? That's a pigeon noise, isn't it? Yeah, that's not the sound owls make. Owls go, right? Something like that. She makes an owl noise. <laughs> and it seems like confirmation enough to him. So he begins to head in the direction of his home. And she's taking in all the sights along the journey. She's taking in all the information. And she begins to think, you know, maybe, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe I came across just one volatile person and a bunch more who were just nervous of my presence. And there are a lot of humans who are of good nature and who want to help. So, you know, she, she, she trusts her intuition and follows, you know, stays 
with him to his house. They get to his house and he introduces her to the magician. And he says, magician, this is an owl that I just met today. Something about her is regal and beautiful and majestic and I want you to take care of her. Whatever it costs. Magician takes a look, agrees immediately about her, our mag majesticness, you know. He can sense her energy. See, he's a magician. He's, he's in tune with, you know, some outerworldly stuff. So <laughs> he understands that her energy is not that of the normal owl. So... He takes inventory. He says, you know, you know what? This one I'll do for free. Something something about this bird just says that if I help her, it'll be a huge blessing to her. And perhaps one to me as well. So he does. He goes and he whips up his little potion. And begins to help her. Now, she can sense that the magician wants to help her too. But really, she's being trusting of the human she came with. So, eventually, he finishes his potion. Lathers some of it on the wing where she was hurt. And it's a cool sensation to her. And... It feels good within no time. And she's got her wings spanned out again. The aura of her power is strong. She feels like she can fly above the earth itself. And she knows she can. But there's something about this human that she just wants to continue to learn of and so she spreads her wings looks at him he smiles a huge smile looks right into those bright beautiful owl eyes of hers and he says you can do anything in the world anything I can tell what is it that you want to do? She thinks about it with her grand wings open and thinks, I want to rest. I want to lay and feel the sensation that you humans feel when you get to drift off into this beautiful world comprised of your dreams. Now, she tucks her wings back in and begins to tilt her head in a way that she did when he was petting her to signal that she wanted to be pet again. Gleefully obliges and begins to pet her again. God, she's beautiful, he thinks. So beautiful. And he pets and pets and says, Boy, I'm getting tired. I will leave my window open. In case you decide you would like to fly out and be free in the middle of the night. But otherwise, you are more than welcome to stay here for the night and rest. She thinks, rest. How coincidental is it that he actually says that when it's what I was just thinking. So, she decides... Perhaps I will stay for a while. And 
ruffles up her feathers. <laughs> and she doesn't know what to do. So she decides, I'm just going to watch this human that I've been watching observe how he does it. And I'm going to try to mimic him. So he lays down. Takes off his stuff, you know, and uh, offers her a nice place to sit right on his chest. And she does. She tucks her wings, sits down, and rests on his chest and looks at him. He looks at her and says, Yeah. <sighs> okay, beautiful owl. It's sleepy time now. Why don't we just take a breath and relax our minds? We've had a long day. So she takes the cues, takes a breath. <laughs> She feels the rhythm of his breath come in and out. Her breathing begins to sync up with his. She begins to feel calmer. body begins to relax. Things seem to becoming wavy. Hazy. Just the different sensation than she's known. Before meeting this human. He's so warm. Feel so comfortable. She begins to feel the warmth of her feathers. Warming him. He was fast asleep in no time. Feeling the comfort of this majestic bird's presence. He just knew, just absolutely knew that everything was okay. Because everything is okay. Everything is just fine. He began to relax down deeper and deeper without any sense of unease. Everything was easy. Everything was nice. Feeling unlike he's known without her as well. So he relaxes. She does something she's not done before, and that's drift more and more until she was in a pleasant sleep, in a dream full of vast possibilities and endless beauty unlike she's ever seen. That's saying a lot, saying, you know, considering that she came from heaven. <laughs> but she takes this opportunity and 
before I, she knows it, she's awake again. So is he. He was just looking at her upon her awake. And she knows that while she got to the trees, her dream of just going to sleep, it was going to be time to move on soon. Time to go about her day and experience more, do more. But she knew what was possible now. She knew that it was doable to get sleep, to calm herself. And she realized that the variable was that all the time that she had spent on Earth so far, had been with a busy mind. It was with busy thoughts about this and that and just wanting to think of everything and do everything and see everything that she hadn't really allowed herself to just relish in this moment and relax her mind to accept the thing that she was looking for rather than to continue to look for it with a busy mind. That is the key to this story. It is accepting what you are looking for. Being in the mind frame of acceptance and allowing that thing to happen Allowing it to happen, not hoping for it to happen, accepting that it is happening, and then becoming one with that reality. It's your time now. It's your time, beautiful owl, to accept. Things happen the way they happen, even if it's a crazy day and you feel like things are being thrown at you and people are being mean to you, however you feel or felt, it's okay to just let it go, to take a deep breath like we're going to do right now. And release all of that negativity. And breathe in the beauty and light, majesty that is being offered to you right now. Accepting it with another deep breath. And this time holding it. sure you can feel your body relaxing at this point. And if you're not already sleeping, it's okay. Just relax and accept that all that you want to happen is going to happen. Accept that in your dreams, you are going to see the beauty, the fullness, the greatness of all that is yours, given to you by God. Accept that when you wake up, it's going to be a wonderful day. There's going to be vast and endless possibilities and opportunities waiting for you. You accept that, so it shall be. And so it is.